Okay, we've got some good news coming from the Microsoft deal, actually. Mm -hmm. So Bethesda are going back to Steam. And if you're to think back a few years ago, of course, you'll remember the whole Bethesda launcher of drama and all of that fun, fun, fun stuff. But no, they've said they are saying goodbye to the Bethesda launcher this year. And starting in April, we're going to be able to migrate our games over and the wallet as well mm -hmm. to uh, to your Steam account. Now, most save games are migrated over. Some do require like a little bit of manual work. Um, and for the games that require, you can still use your Bethesda uh, login to sign in and play. But basically, they're doing away with the Bethesda launcher, and that's nice. I mean, I, I get, you know, companies want to have their own thing, but at least for the end user experience, it's just one place, nice and handy, so happy. Yep, that's the thing that's insane to me. It's like, this is, you know, obviously, the, everyone has their own launcher these days, and everyone knows why. It's because they want to get rid of the Steam cut. They want to get rid of whatever cut other platforms take. And in this case, they're just going, you know what? This hasn't worked out. And it's not like they pulled a bunch of games off Steam anyway. You can still play everything on Steam, which is, you know, probably why this hasn't worked out super well for them, or at least we expect it hasn't worked out super well for them. But now they're just like, yeah, we're just dropping this whole thing. Everyone just go play our games on Steam because that's where we're, that's where <laughs> it's better for you. It's better for us probably because we don't have to pay people to make this launcher that probably not that many people are using anyway mostly because they haven't had like a big release on the launcher and they've never you know they never went exclusive so they never really pushed it too hard anyway so yeah so it's great you know they save uh, some money we get a mm -hmm. bunch of bullshit we have to jump through hoops we're all sad you know tangible benefit just bleh. but now uh, no longer yep because of this xbox deal and that of course completely fits in with how xbox have been doing things Absolutely. the halo games are on Steam now. The Master Chief Collection is split up into individual games and uh, and is on Steam. And Microsoft evidently don't really care about that 30%. I mean, for the games that they do, it's not going to be 30%. It's going to be 20 because of the whole um, volume thing with mm. um, how Steam actually charges developers. So basically it makes sense for them. I think uh, it's in line with what our, you know uh, Spencer has been saying all of the time, which is just more players grow brand grow our games steam is the obvious place to do that yeah it's, yeah it's so it, it's so insane that you know this happens You're like well obviously this is the best way forward because people will be happier on steam so why not do it but obviously you know finally someone in the industry is having actual sense for a change yeah plus it's probably just a bunch of extra work that really has got little benefit compared to just throwing it all on steam and being done yeah um sure. plus then just user experience Mm -hmm. uh, which is something that actually Microsoft seems mm -hmm. to understand. Now, if they understood it a bit mm -hmm. more, then maybe the Xbox app and PC wouldn't be a, a bit suck sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, where... Probably yeah. they're good. Yeah, I, I think the Xbox app and PC is terrible for Game Pass right now, but it used to be so much worse. Like, literally in the past, maybe... I'm trying to think here. Maybe uh, last year, maybe? Maybe last eight months? It has seen remarkable improvement. And I imagine that they're just kind of going, well, why are we doing a whole bunch of stuff over Bethesda? We need to work on this Xbox app. We'll make that the place for PC gamers to go eventually. But in the meantime, Steam's a bunch of features. So if people are on Steam having a good time or on the Xbox platform giving us all the money, either way, we're really happy. Yeah. And before I talk about BNet, one game that I think uh, is the most interesting here is actually Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. So it is buy to play. And it does have that optional subscription yeah, as well, well first, yeah. uh, because of all of the, you know, pay to uh, well, pay to skip, sort of paid convenience, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, convenience, you know, getting around problems that they themselves created and sell you the solution for, you know, standard. Ugh. But mm. it's got a 2022 roadmap and the roadmap doesn't look half bad, actually. Yeah, that's the thing. Fallout 76 is like... I, I've never played it, so I don't know. I still have in my head of the, you know, everyone laughing at it forever on its release. But it seems like it's found its niche and it's growing steadily. It's got enough kind of, uh, it's got enough players to keep funding how it's going. And I think that the roadmap just looks like they've actually got a full solid plan for content this year for four major patches. I'm like, man, if, if any other MMO could come out and say, we've got four major patches here's everything we're doing this year, here's, you know, there's a bunch of details we'll iron out, but here's generally what we're doing. If most MMOs could do that, every player would be really happy. Yeah. So I feel like Fallout 76, if they're moving back to Steam and going, I get rid of this Bethesda launcher stuff, especially because they're moving like a Fallout first subscription, everything over to Steam as well. So they're like, yeah, people, yeah, Steam will get a cut of this, but 
it's time for them to be able to really push hard on that. And I think if they drop to free to play or cut uh, a price, because it's thirty four thirty four ninety nine in uh, Great British Pounds on Steam at the minute, which seems hefty. But if they do like a deep discount, like the fact that it was selling box copies for like a tenner and stuff before, yeah. if they can do a deep discount, it might actually be time for Fallout seventy six to kind of shine in among Steam in the pre run up to you know Starfield. Yeah, I mean, like I think of even, you know, FF14, like pretty yeah. recently they laid out their big plans. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice when a game can do that. So little games, there are so few do. Yeah. You know, we're World of Warcraft players. We don't know <laughs> shit. This doesn't tell us nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, whereas even, yeah, 76, FF14, they're far more willing to talk in advance. So mm -hmm. that's the one game where I feel like just, you know, it all moving over to Steam could probably, well, I don't know, could probably help. Yeah, it's actually so if if this comes with like an organizational push from them to kind of go well, okay, here's here's the big Bethesda Steam sale say sometime in the next couple months after they do this, everyone's migrated the game over. Hey, everyone, hop on Steam and then Steam the like Fallout seventy six player ship gets a boost because that's another thing that's interesting. We don't know Bethesda launcher player counts. No, we don't know console player counts either. So seeing all of Fallout 76's PC participation. I think it's a lot stronger on consoles than on PC generally, but you you know, the PC MMO scene is still that's the biggest parts where people who play MMOs are going to go. But being able to see like an actual view of how many people are playing Fallout 76 on PC might actually just kind of enter it into the race again in terms of public opinion. And then it turns on well, speaking of MMOs, battled on it, runs World of Warcraft. Yeah. Now that is that's an interesting prospect because mm -hmm. it's way more entrenched as an ecosystem. It's been around for longer. It's one of the launchers that people have accepted. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, look, there was always a World of Warcraft launcher. All that really happened for us WoW players is our World of Warcraft launcher turned into the battle that one and had other Blizzard games yeah, on it. Yeah, it's Call of Duty on it, I like, does it? <laughs> that, yeah, that bit still feels weird. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, C could that happen? And that's, that's the weird thing. Mm -hmm. I somewhat doubt it because, or at least for the Blizzard products, yeah. just because the Blizzard audience is so entrenched in Bnet, and why give up that 20% when yeah. you don't have to, when it's already so well accepted, unlike the Bethesda launcher. And in fairness to them, Battle Dot, that it's, it's obviously a launcher designed for a smaller count of games. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good launcher. Yeah, no, like I think, they rarely yeah. have bullshit with it. Yeah, that's the one thing that's interesting. Obviously, the fact that it started as Blizzard games, and that's where you access them. So people were never like, oh, you've pulled these games off Steam. They were never on Steam in the first place. That's got, like, what entrenched it an awful lot. But it's also the... I've... I'd say it a couple times. I've never had a problem with it. It always runs. It's got, you know, everything you download from Battle.net just caps out your connection immediately. You know, I was about to say no matter how insane it is, but, you know, within reason. Stuff like, you know, like 50, 60, 70 megabytes per second on any game release. Flawless, like... Yeah, it wouldn't be for me as good as... Actually, too, the mm. Robert Space Industries launcher for Star Citizen. Mm. That thing has a terrifying ability to, like, render it so that nobody else on the same connection as you can even use the internet. <laughs> Ridiculous. Nice. Even more so than Steam. Mm. Nice. Uh, but other than that, yeah, Steam, Steam's been awesome, but I, I've generally found BNET to be great. Yeah, BNET's great. So the question to, that I kind of have is, you know, uh, considering that's clearly a good infrastructure and a really solid one, I can't imagine they'll they'll actually want to abandon that. But they could maybe try to work some of what they've learned, at least. You know, just not, like, literally uh, roll it into Xbox stuff, but just kind of cross-talk between the uh, groups of people. Obviously because Mike Barra was Battle.net yeah. guy. No, he's a, he's the leader of Blizzard and was ex Xbox, so I think there's a lot of room there for Xbox to actually learn from Battle.net, which is the only launcher I think is good. To, to be honest, I almost wonder why they don't try to make it so that these Bethesda games are on Bnet. Uh, honestly, it, I think like, that would um, be the improvement. Yeah, yeah, like the money that it. This is not me talking about a best consumer experience. I suppose the best experience is that there's a toggle in Bnet for like Blizzard, non-Blizzard. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you can get your games there or you can get them on Steam, whatever. But like from a business perspective, right? Like, yeah. why would they not? Why would they? You could give Valve 20% yeah. or you could go to your already extremely entrenched audience of Battle.net people yep. and maybe get a few, you know, Skyrim and Fallout players to just be exposed to you know, Diablo, Warcraft, all that. Yep, that's the thing. That's why I think uh, the Bethesda thing to me is less, hey, everyone go to Steam where it's better. We're cutting costs. I feel a lot of it is Xbox are happy with Steam and why why cordon everything off? 
why cordon all of your Bethesda games off away from Xbox platform? Because if you're Xbox, you'll want people to play your Xbox game and go, there's another Xbox game I can play. There's another Xbox game, which isn't going to be the case if you're going, I'm playing Fallout 76. What else is on the launcher? Oh, it's other Bethesda games. You're not going to see the Halo there to jump into. So I can imagine them wanting to pull everything to Xbox, but it's kind of weird that Battle.net just, Battle just works as it is, kind of isolated. But then the question there is really Call of Duty. Has it been doing well enough on PC to warrant staying there? Or are they going to pull that back to Steam? Or even, you know, throw it onto the Xbox platform? I suppose they might not be able to do that until yeah. the deal's solidified legally in terms of uh, getting around contract stuff. But well, well, the thing then is, like, in terms of revenue lost, Yeah. second you put that in Steam, you're losing 20%, and it's Call of Duty. Yeah. And like, I know Vanguard hasn't done as well, but that still is a pretty deeply entrenched audience who are going to buy those games. So yeah. second goes off being at, they lose so much PC money. I, suppose, I think console yeah. money is more important for them, of course, but I'm you know, still picking yeah. off on PC. Yeah, I was going to say that maybe, you know, are they going to get 20% more sales to out manage that? that Possibly, but then Warzone likely has really deep monetization from a lot of people. So that would be where the loss would be if they put Warzone on Steam. But then they'd be competing with, or they'd, they'd have that in, they'd have that inroad. Well, I suppose the, the real key will be getting everything to the xbox platform and improving that in the future yeah i suppose it's that tricky thing future. when you start doing all this acquisition work you <laughs> yeah. end up having sort of duplicate functions across your overall organization yeah. where you know your, your business units have their own version of fundamentally the same thing yeah i just think bnet's going to survive but yeah. that's that's basically it for this story um mm -hmm. this is more of at least for end user experience it's more of microsoft's direction just being quite good yep so it's generally mm -hmm. yeah generally good news another launcher is gone, there can be one fewer thing installed in your PC. I think that pretty much just makes us all happy. Yeah, so I think um, if someone, if, if Xbox wants to go ahead and buy EA and Ubisoft and Rockstar and do the same, please work away. Oh all no! Because <laughs> all of those launchers are fucking tragic. Honestly, utterly tragic. I don't know how Bethesda's worked. I know they had a bunch of customer support issues, so maybe it was kind of shitty. But Battle.net's the only the only non storefront that's been like a publisher launcher that's been good. Yeah, sweet. So man monopolizes the entire industry just to get rid of launchers. <laughs> we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>